Welcome to the KTH Interference Alignment Testbed. This testbed consists of three base stations or three transmitters and three receivers. And uh, the transmitters are located one over there, about five meters from here, one over there, about five meters from here, and one over there, about five meters from here. And then we have three nodes. which looks like this. Uh, three receiver nodes. And they have two antennas. We have some receiver boards. And we have USRPs for, uh, for AD, A to D conversion. And then we do all the processing on a computer, which is actually located in that room. So all the processing is done centrally on that computer. Yes, and the performance uh, is illustrated on this screen. So here you see uh, uh, six view graphs. And uh, these view graphs illustrate uh, the interference alignment at the user or the terminal. So you have, this is for instance for user number one. And here you have um, a black dot indicating the strength of the desired signal and then you have two, a red and a blue arrow indicating the length of which indicates the strength of the interfering signals as seen at, from the receiver point of view and the angle between uh, the interfering signals uh, and the desired so this angle and this angle is indicating the uh, angle between the subspaces of the received signals and okay um, this system is uh, is not not uh, optimized against the processing speed so the feedback rate is quite slow so let's be very still now and wait for the next update yes yeah now you see uh, um, you see some movement here. The movement is actually that we are going through 38 subcarriers. Uh, we have an OFDM system with 38 subcarriers, and you can see uh, the interference alignment on those 38 subcarriers. And what you can see in particular is that the red and the blue arrow are typically very close, and that is exactly the interference alignment. They are aligned in the same subspace so that the receiver is able to reject two signals at the same time. Here at user 1 you can see that this is alignment is very close but not at user 2 and not user number 3 and this is easily explained because here you can see that the interferers are actually stronger than the desired signal and then it's extra important, particularly important, to have them well aligned. In the upper plot, we have uh, the same. Uh, this was for interference alignment in the lower one for user one, user two, not user three. In the upper one, we have the coordinated multipoint, and that coordinated multipoint is another solution than interference alignment, and it's it's more expensive in a way because it's using more resources. It needs more backhaul, backhaul capacity, and here. You can see the, for the from the receiver point of view, the, the systems are identical except that the, the coordinated multipoint uses its, its, uh, its, uh, more, its superior power to compress the subspace of interference interference more. And it's also able to resolve this problem that the interference signals are actually stronger for user number one. This screen uh, shows uh, the bit error rate uh, of interference alignment and coordinated multipoint. I don't, you are, I don't think you are able to see this really, but um, it shows the bit error rates, and you could see that the bit error rates, that are the raw bit error rates, by the way, uh, the, the coded bit error rates are much better, but uh, um, you could see that um, 
interference alignment and coordinated multipoint had a, had an abitur rate close to zero, but at the same time they are pushing three streams through uh, the channel, um, through the multiple access channel, while the, we also had the reference schemes of MIMO, um, single user MIMO, where the, with similar performance, uh, but there we only have two streams at the time. So, in summary, the interference alignment and the coordinated multipoint can have more throughput. There's also uh, some figures down here, which are the phase evolution, and that is a measurement of the phase in adjacent uh, uh, time slots, as seen from one mobile station and six transmitter antennas, because there are three base stations, two antennas, that's six antennas, and the mobile station can measure the phase of all those six uh, antennas. Yes, we can see in a moment we will see the phase evolution. So this is the phase change between adjacent time slots. And or, as long as it, it's equally on all the six and tr transmitter antennas, there's no problem. Uh, but if this is unequal, there will be a problem, uh, particularly for the coordinated multipoint solution. And the, there is some difference between the different values, and that is because uh, the, all the six transmitters are using individual local oscillators. So there will always be some drift, uh, and but it's within a few degrees, which agrees quite well with uh, uh, data sheets of the of the equipment. Okay, uh, we see here that uh, user number three has a much stronger desired and interfering signal. Let's move that user from its desired base station towards the interferers. Now you can see, for user number three, that the interfering signal is actually stronger than the side signal. And uh, at least for some subcarriers. And uh, as you could see, on those subcarriers, the, uh, the alignment was particularly good. Then the red and the blue arrow were particularly close. And that is due to the smart uh, weight adaption algorithm that is being used. Now I'm going to move this, uh, this uh, node, this mobile station, uh, into another room so that we have more uh, uh, attenuation of the signal. So this is the mobile station we see over here. Okay, it's already the signal is a bit weak. Uh, now, we can have a look at the bit error rate also on this user. And it's around 2% already, uh, or 1% to 2%. Uh, let's move it inside. So, actually the... The bit error rate is now increased to about 3.5%, and you can see here, here that the, the signal has power has been reduced some 10 dB, and the interference is now clearly stronger than the desired signal. And we can try to close the door as well. Yes, we have now moved the one of the transmitters to inside the room and we have also uh, closed the door and so now we will see how much the desired signal is reduced. Yeah, now we can have a look here. Now the signal is, is weaker but also the interference has got weaker so now the bit error rate is actually, uh, for the interference alignment, it's actually zero now. So even though the signal is much more, is much weaker now, the, the performance is actually better because the interference is less.